Good Friday to you. Thank you for being a part of the program. It's October the 11th, and more specifically for our top headline tonight, tomorrow is more than October the 12th. A special ceremony earlier today marking tomorrow as a very special day, not just in McGoffin County, but across the Commonwealth as well, thanks to some local legislators. We'll talk about that in just a few moments and just a couple of things before we get there. We'll also talk about the cold front that's uh, still going to give us a change up for tomorrow's forecast. Temperatures are holding pretty much right where they were expected to be this time last evening. Uh, we've got a better timeline for you, a little more finite for the shower chances that we have tonight and into your Saturday. And we're still looking to stay, I, th I believe, above the frost line, so to speak, in your weather forecast. More on that in just a few moments. A couple of new things on our calendar tonight, and otherwise, we'll get to that in just a few seconds. Election-wise, just an update on an event, uh, or on a happening, rather. Uh, it's also a bit of a follow-up, so to speak. We're now under a month before the general election on November the 5th, and Kentucky's Democratic Party has said today that they are officially filing suit suing the state board of elections over the thousands of registered voters who are on or said to be on an inactive list a total of 175,000 Kentucky voters on this inactive list they're not all democrats uh, it's broken up around 60 40 something of that nature nevertheless the democratic party said the day that they have filed a lawsuit in Franklin County Circuit Court against Kentucky State Board of Elections, saying that this move, placing those voters on that inactive list, infringes on their right to vote. The board's executive director has gone on record before saying that if a Kentucky voter finds their name on that list, which can be found on the Kentucky Secretary of State's website, they can have that list updated um, by simply updating their address by November of 2022. Um, they can also do it on election day by going and voting. Once again, 175,000 voters on that registration could find their um, eligibility to vote impeded. Uh, and of course, as we have seen, not just in local, but state races as well, some can be decided by as few as 100 votes or less, much less in some occasions. So that is a significant number. A Kentucky woman has been found, her body, in another state. A lot of unknowns at this time. Her body was found badly burned in a ditch in South Carolina in the county of Chester. The body was discovered September the 20th. A, an official identification has just now been made this week. The family says via other reports that she was, over the course of the past year or so, known to have been in Virginia and Pennsylvania and possibly other states, and they had last spoken to them sometime about a month ago. They are unsure of her reason for being in South Carolina, and they also have no idea as to who she may have been with or any other leads in the case. Uh, authorities have not released a cause of death as of yet. The woman, uh, Melissa Whitus, has two children and was married. Well, you know, I can remember when the when it first came out and the scare that was associated with it has since become a fact of life, but a, a small one, but still a fatal one at times. Officials in Louisville, health officials that is, say that that city has confirmed its first fatality this year as a result of West Nile virus. Louisville Metro Health and Wellness says that so far two people have been diagnosed with West Nile in Louisville, in the city of Louisville this year, and one of those cases has proved fatal. Last year, there were four cases of humans having West Nile in Louisville. None of those resulted in a death. There was a death associated to West Nile in Louisville back in 2016. Tomorrow's date has much more significance than it did 24 hours ago. I'll tell you why right after this. From brakes, exhaust, suspension, fluid changes, to expert collision and auto body, to turning your 4 before or diesel from mild to wild, Get real auto maintenance, paint, and repair at Black Smoke Performance in Dixie of Sagersville. 349-8785. Getting the best deal on the best tires with the best service has never been easier. Just log on to ConleyTire.net, check out the latest rebates, sales, and promotions, pick out the tires you want, and email, call, or come by. 
for huge savings from the family who's been proudly serving the area for over 32 years. Conley Tire in Staffordsville, 297-2424. I'm Bill Tinker. I've spent the past 19 years defending insurance companies in car crashes, truck crashes, and slip and falls. Are you involved in a case like that? Is the insurance company giving you the runaround about your medical bills, your benefits, or your lost wages? Contact me at McFarland Tinker Law Office. With our combined experience of over 58 years, we're here ready to work for you. You're going to absolutely fall in love with all the new arrivals at the seasonal shop from all the autumn colors and styles in ladies designs shoes and accessories charlie page mud pie you know the name brands to jewelry simply southern natural life caps cups and more to rooms of home decor and all you'll need to decorate for the fall and halloween seasons plus everything from coffees to candles but hurry because everything Christmas is already arriving daily and will be out soon and fall will be gone before you know it. At Fraser's Prater Drugs Seasonal Shop in downtown Sagersville. I'm Dr. Jason Zimmerman at Highlands ARH, the healthcare system of Appalachia. Thanks to a lot of dedication and hard work by a local father and family and our local judge executive and our local state representative who has made this a statewide event or declaration, if you will. Um, today was a day um, recognizing tomorrow as being the actual day. But nevertheless, this morning's ceremony has been a lot of love and pain and heartache, joy, and years in the making for a local family with some help of some others. The loss of a young, precious woman's life associated to something as simple and, and preventable as a bed sore has driven her family and officials to honor her and to help others through her. Tomorrow has been declared Pressure Sore Awareness Day. This is not just a county-wide declaration. This is a Commonwealth of Kentucky declaration as well with it carrying stricter laws which have now been updated and changed to prevent others from suffering or worse like Bridget. October 12, 2019, tomorrow, is a, is a Bridget Ann Howard Bed Sore Awareness Day here in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Uh, that day was, uh, was chosen as part of uh, Bridget Passed Away, October 12, 2013, uh, and we wanted to bring uh, a, a positive uh, recognition to something that happened on a tragic day. And if you knew her, and I think most everybody in here probably did, she was a special young lady. Special young lady that was born with spina bifida. Everyone should be aware, whether they have a loved one that's in a long-term care facility, a hospital, uh, at home, and they're caring for someone. Someone who is not physically able to move themselves around uh, within the bed or whatever type of, uh, of uh, equipment that they are resting on, that long-term laying in one position uh, creates uh, the cubitus or bed sores or pressure sores to where the weight is on certain areas and it begins to thin the skin uh, and leads to uh, many different conditions that can uh, be fatal and at minimum is very painful. So I think the whole purpose of this is to bring awareness. And with Bridget's closest friends and family looking on, her nephew read words he penned two years ago, not knowing the gravity they would hold today. My Aunt Bridget was an inspiration to many people. She was a unique lady. Bridget was born with spina bifida, a birth defect that occurs when the spine and spinal cord do not form properly. As a result of this disorder, Bridget was paralyzed from the waist down, resulting in her being in a wheelchair for her entire life. 
Many people would look at Bridget and suspect that she lived a very depressing life, but she was one of the most positive people I knew. Bridget did not let her condition define her or her physical limitations restrain her from living her life to the fullest. She was the type of person that uh, if, if a vehicle was going to leave when she was real young, she wanted to be in that vehicle. If there was a trip planned, she wanted to help plan that trip, and she wanted to be there in that trip. She loved country music, and it tickled her to death to be able to, to get to go with me to Nashville several times, and, and, uh, and she, always, uh, she always loved to go on vacations. And she was a very hyped up type of person to be in the condition that she was in. Bridges life taught me that each day we are given is a gift that should be enjoyed to the fullest and that life's obstacles can be more easily conquered when you keep a positive mindset. Her life also taught me that the struggles you face in life cannot define you, but only shape you. Bridget lived her life beyond her limitations, so much so that her legacy will live on forever. Thank you. And to show the family's deepest appreciation and gratitude, young Mr. Howard also did an amazing job presenting Judge Wireman and Representative Blanton plaques honoring their work and efforts towards making tomorrow's special day a reality. So what we were able to do uh, this past February, and you'll hear this in uh, the resolution uh, that we passed uh, this past session, was uh, Tommy came down last summer, uh, testified at committee, uh, and with his testimony uh, and the work that was, was done, uh, the committee uh, moved forward and, and support of the cabinet change in the regulation that actually took the, uh, uh, the cubitus violation, which is a type A violation, and it doubles the fine uh, that is placed upon these institutions to uh, try to encourage them to be more aware, uh, to be uh, more attentive to patients that they have in their care. Uh, because we know that the, the way you do that is by watching, observing, and constantly moving that patient so that those things do not set up on them. And how do you get companies to listen? You hit their wallets, right? And so we were able to, to increase the penalties by double of what they previously had been, uh, up to, I believe it was $10,000, uh, was it, is the maximum on that violation that was able to change. So with that, uh, you know, we feel like that uh, uh, we've uh, been able to honor uh, Bridget and bring uh, recognition or awareness to uh, the, the cubitus problem that we have, uh, and unfortunately, and it's not because of, but it is common in the medical uh, field area. What we did today was uh, recognize uh, the work that has been done by family uh, to get pressure sore awareness uh, brought to the forefront. I'm glad to be a part of something that brings intentional focus on something that is so important. Uh, we in Eastern Kentucky like to take care of our own. Uh, we have uh, a lot of folks that do take care of family members who are bedridden at home, and we expect the same care at uh, facilities uh, where folks can't keep those folks at home. I've always said that something always comes good from something bad, even though it was my daughter's passing, you know. And, uh, but I, I'm sure that she's looking at us right now saying thank you because, you know, but before she passed away, she never had a clue why she died, how she died, you know. And, and by the way that it took place, I owed it to her. And, and this keeps her name alive throughout Kentucky. And that we, hopefully we might be able to take it farther. But this is just the beginning of bed sore awareness to me. And the fine, as Representative Blanton said, is now up to $10,000 for each occurrence for medical facilities or others which allow bed sores to develop and cause such serious problems. And they are also already, that being Representative Blanton and the Howard family, working on making this not just a statewide declarational recognition, but a nationwide declaration and recognition. We'll keep you up to date on that. Given the fact that they have relentlessly pursued uh, today's um, announcement, I won't be surprised if it's not taken to a national level sometime soon. I'll be right back. 
Right now, for pennies on the dollar, a huge selection of like new laptop computers, a fresh stock of video games, the Cadillac of dog tracking and training systems, new hunting rifles, accessories, and ammo. And they always stock, buy, sell, and pawn gold and silver coins and jewelry with a new selection just in at Parkway Gun and Pawn in Sagersville, 349 Pawn. At Sagersville National Bank, they know your house is much more than your home. It's an investment, and for many of us, the biggest we'll ever make. And whether it's for needed repairs and maintenance, or a new addition or renovation to give you some more room and more equity, let Sagersville National Bank deal with all the financial work and worry. Real and real competitive, hometown, homegrown, home improvement loans at Sagersville National. It can be one of the hardest parts of being a parent. You can beg them, bribe them, hold them down and try to force them, and sometimes you still can't get them to take their medicine. Well, problem solved at Parkway Pharmacy with FlavorX. Let your kids customize their medicine with some of the best flavors that really do taste great, and it's totally free with your child's prescription at Parkway Pharmacy. So stop the suffering, theirs and yours, for free and get your Flavor X flavored medicines at Parkway Pharmacy in Sagersville. We have finally done it. After years and years of extensive testing, we not only invented the chicken sandwich, we have perfected the chicken sandwich. Come and try it and love it with a big famous dip breast strip pickles and mayonnaise, or however you like it fixed. And if you like, make it a double. Just make your way to Lee's to get it and grab a cookie while you're there. At your Sagersville Lee's Famous Recipe, where even our ice is famous. Whether it's diabetes, arthritis, or injury causing you foot and ankle problems, or excruciating pain in your heel that's often easily treatable, Dr. Cheryl Chaney has over 21 years in group and private practice as one of the region's leading podiatrists and she's now practicing right here in Sagersville. Dr. Cheryl Stalder Chaney is now seeing new patients, young and old, at Hope Family Podiatry Center in Sagersville just next to the Lee's Famous Recipe. Call for an appointment today. Here's your community calendar brought to you by McGoffin Farm Bureau. An important announcement for anyone looking to become an apprentice. I've also got an email for you to find out more information about an event coming up in just a couple of weeks here uh, in, well, not in McGoffin County, but in the eastern Kentucky area. We've also got some other news and announcements and your weather forecast to follow. A reminder about the open house where you can learn more about joining the Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters and learn about their debt-free college degree and career paths. That is going to be October the 17th. That's next week. And there is an email at the bottom of your screen to RSVP K Conley at I-K-O-R-C-C-J-A-T-F dot org. I know that's a mouthful. If you want that, call me. We will get that to you if you're interested in learning more about becoming an apprentice. That is next week on the 17th, which is Thursday in Grayson. The Pink Lady, rather the Pink Carpet Affair Luncheon, my apologies, is October the 24th. That's a Thursday at 11 a.m. at the Extension Service. They would like to know you're coming, though, ladies, breast cancer survivors, so please call the Extension Service at 349-3216. And one more reminder about the benefit held in honor of the Vanessa Stapleton family in an effort to raise funds for travel expenses to see her in the medical facility she is in, a fundraiser tomorrow, a benefit with a lot of singing and raffle crafts, bring a lawn chair to the Sagersville Dairy Queen from 5 to 8 tomorrow evening. Bring your announcements to us if you want everyone to know what you've got going on or if you want to wish someone a very special birthday or anniversary. In other announcements for this Friday, several funeral service arrangements sadly to pass along. The first, a reminder of services to be held on 
Saturday, tomorrow at 1 o'clock in honor of 61-year-old Melissa Joseph Reed of Hager Hill. She passed away on the 9th, formerly of McGoffin County, the daughter of the late Fanny and Coachy Joseph Sr. Besides her husband, Ron Reed, she survived by sons Brandon and Evan Joseph and daughters Brandy Reed and Misty Barso. Services tomorrow at the Sagersville Funeral Home. Jimmy Allen Howard, 63, of John Howard Road, passed away on the 8th, the son of Jimmy B. Howard and the late Agnes Howard. He survived by his wife, Jeanette, sons John and Lucas Ray Brown, daughters Amanda and Megan Brown, and Renee Edwards. Visitation is tonight. Services are tomorrow at 2 from the McGoffin County Funeral Home. 30-year-old Stephanie Renee Juniper Escapic of South River Road passed away on the 7th, the daughter of Rick and Bonnie Juniper. Besides her parents, she survived by sons, Jack Paul Scapic Jr. and Gunner Dale Caskey. Visitation is after 6 tomorrow. Services will begin Sunday at 1. And one last announcement, and it comes in loving memory this evening of C.M. Whitaker, loved and missed by his children, grandchildren, family, and friends. His birthday falling on Sunday. Your forecast has, of course, the cold front coming through tonight that gives us shower chances. The temperatures are still holding pretty much where they were expected uh, to be 24 hours ago, but the forecast tonight, powered by Licking Valley RECC, has a more of a finite window as to when we might see those showers, and then some more showers expected to come early next week. While I've been tweaking your forecast, especially watching tomorrow's for the last several days, uh, we're going to tweak it again tonight. Not so much temperature-wise, however. They're staying pretty much uh, pat at 62 for a daytime high tomorrow and a 38-degree low tomorrow night. Some folks might get some frost out of this cold front. I'm hoping we're going to stay just above that uh, comfortably to the tune of a degree or two. And that, of course, will follow, by the way. Tonight's low of 49 degrees with mostly cloudy skies. Shower chances actually rolled into the forecast in the uh, form of a 30% chance after 4 o'clock in the morning and an 80% chance of showers before 11 o'clock in the morning. After that, it's going to be a pretty quick clearing, I think, or at least a moderately quick clearing. We'll go with that, sure. We'll see some sunshine, and we'll see mostly clear skies by your Saturday uh, night and a low of 38 degrees. And those clear skies could knock that temperature down a degree or two, and you know what that means. Keep your eye on it. Sunday will rebound to 71, 41 that night. A little fog to start off your Sunday, but a lot of sun thereafter and clear skies that night. A beautiful end of the weekend, if there is such a thing. Monday, 71 again, and 47 for your high and low. Still sunny, still nothing more than a few clouds above, and another beautiful fall day in the neighborhood on what is Columbus Day, of course, next Monday. Keep that in mind. I'm assuming some folks might get the day off uh, as a result, and I'm not one of them. So congratulations if you are. Uh, going on to Tuesday, that's when shower chances make another appearance. We've got another setup that will give us about a 30% chance of showers Tuesday. Still partly so Sunny skies and 73, but that front also gives us shower chances Wednesday to the tune of 40%. Still a little sun, but we're back down into the 60s, and we're going to hover there for a little while. 62 Wednesday with that shower threat or chance. Thursday, 60 and 41. Friday, 63 and 43. Cooler air is around the corner. Well, starting as soon as tomorrow. That's a wrap for this Friday. As always, I can't thank you enough for being here, and we wish you the best of weekends and hope to see you back here Monday night. Thank you for watching.